And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. If you ask people, I guess, why they played Wombat Rescue for the first time, it's almost always going to probably involve the word cute. All right, people don't know a lot about wombats. I now know that wombats poop square cubes. And uh, that actually is one of the first legitimate uses of cubes I've seen in a game. In this game, you are a wombat rescuer. You are a mamo going out and heading and finding your babies and bringing them home. And how are you doing that? By leaving a smell poop trail for you to follow. Uh, this is a game of efficiency or a race in a sense where you're trying to go there and beat everyone else, be the first one back. Here's how it plays. going to build sort of a race course where you have your mama wombats here and they're going to be rescuing four different baby wombats of their color and you're going to be doing that by sending them out and following a path so you can set the course up this is the, the basic course and it's randomized because there's different tiles here and so different things are going to happen on the different spots there's different food tokens and you're going to pull from a bag there's food tokens of value one two and three each player is going to start with a wombat, and each wombat is going to start with a three-value food in their stomach. And each turn after you go, all these foods are going to move one back, and when it comes out, you're going to poop a cube of your color. Now, when you eat food as the game goes by, you're going to put food in your mouth, but your food will not go into start going through that path until there's at least three. So if I have this one here, then later on I add a two. They move together as a group, so eventually they'll come out as a poop cube. Now, why are those poop cubes important? Well, because this game's all about moving and getting to your baby wombats. You're gonna be doing this, and on your turn you can make three moves. Uh, or, and each move can be one of three types. Now, one type can be if you're in a spot, and all these guys start here. You can always go to an adjacent spot if there's food. You smell food, you go there, you eat the food. So this, is, this guy can go one, two, three, just like that, and eat all that food if he wanted to. I'm sorry, if she wanted to. You also, if you are next to your baby, you can smell them too. So if you're directly next to the baby, you can move one space in there. You can also, if you don't like any of your options of moving, you can always move randomly. Uh, when you move randomly, it's called wandering, and you're going to draw the top card of a deck here. And this card will tell you one of the two tiles you go in. So if this guy was here and he draws that, then, he, then, then she's going to go here or here. And so let's say she moves here, then she decides to wander again, and she draws this. Well, then she can go here or here, and so she'll pick here, because that's closer. But it's possible sometimes that that will force you to go backwards, because you're never sure what you're going to get. And on one of these cards, and, or on a couple of the cards, there are food tokens, and when the food tokens show up, at the end of that player's turn, you will replenish all the food spots on the board by pulling things out of a bag. But your most common movement, or the movement that's the best for you, is you can move as far as you want in a straight line as long as you stay in your smell area. Each poop cube on the board gives a radius of two. So this poop cube here, the, the purple wombat, can move all the way to there, just in a straight line, unless you hit something else, you know, like the dingo who will show up, or food things. Now, the, the purple, now the wombat can't go farther, but let's say there was a purple cube here. That purple cube gives another radius and you can keep moving, maybe all the way up to this spot. If you have two purple cubes in the same spot, you have a radius of three, and if you have three, you have a radius of four, which is a pretty big radius. So you're trying to get your wombat to go to specific locations so that you can drop these cubes off when they come out of your digestive system so that on future turns you can move very quickly. Now one player is going to start with the dingo, and on their turn, uh, when they finish their turn, they'll place your dingo on any dingo space on the board. After that, when it's at the end of their turn, if the dingo's already on the board, you will roll a die that goes from one to four and move that dingo that close to the nearest wombat. If a dingo hits a wombat, that wombat is sent back to start. Now when a dingo goes and picks up the baby wombat, you put him here, 
and you want you have to get them back home once you get them back home you put them here if the dingo gets you while you're on your way back home the baby goes back and you get sent back home and you have to go rescue them again each player also comes with four tiles you can use these tiles once per game um, this one here will make the rightmost section of food in your stomach immediately come out <laughs> a laxative i guess this one here will, is the opposite constipator will stop food from moving one round this one here lets you move one space in any direction and this one lets you teleport to home once and you can use these once per game so the first wombat to go and to get all four of their babies and get them all home is the winner there's variants too you can play with two dingoes if you want to make the game harder there's boulder spaces there's you, you can make different tracks the rule book has uh, different setups if you want to try to play differently so you can see here I wouldn't try this one ever but this one's interesting this is a longer one then you got a wider one so you have different variations basically on the same theme the pieces are great aren't they oh look at the little wombats and all oh, the dingoes come in and get your wombat oh, wow. Wow. okay um, and the you know the board itself Someone came by one of our games and they said, are you playing mini Settlers of Catan? Yeah, it's just a bunch of hexes on the board. Okay, but still, the game looks cool and moving around, but how does the game play? Like I said, this is an efficiency game. You are trying to beat everybody else back. Is there a way you can mess other people up? Well, yeah, you can get in their way. Most of the interaction is moving the dingo towards other people, which is pretty obvious. You, move it, you have to move to the closest dingo anyway. But... Um, uh, maybe you, when you're, you're, you're not so much thinking how to stop the other person, you are setting yourself up. Now there actually is a vicious way you can play the game where you eat other cubes of the other dingoes. Um, I don't recommend playing that because it lengthens the game. The game is pretty much at the perfect length at this point in time. So the interaction isn't very strong. It's just that you're trying to set yourself up to get to one place. The interaction is like, I ate this food before you could get there. So you want to get food, right? And you want to get the poop and you... <laughs> I, I wasn't going to laugh. You want to get the poop out at the right times. And so you need to use the one token that gets the poop out quicker at certain points. And sometimes you want to stop it so that you can drop it. Having two cubes in the same spot in the middle of the board gives you a nice zone. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to build a nice smell path all the way up. And you just keep using the same path back and forth in the most efficient way. Although sometimes food is replenished and comes out and gets in your way. And wandering seems like a horrible thing to do, and sometimes it is, but sometimes you have no other option. You have to wander until you eventually get back into a zone or get enough food that you can poop a cube out, and now you have more freedom of movement again. Um, it, that, so that, that part of the game is interesting. The game actually kind of ramps up pretty quickly. By the time you rescue your first wombat baby, you're like, ah, how long is this game going to take? And the answer is not really that long because you'll rescue your second wombat baby probably half time and then the third and fourth like that. When do you warp back home? Is it when you get that fourth baby? I'll go back home. Eh, but usually you probably want to warp back faster than that because you want to try to set your cubes up. That fourth baby, you can zoom up and zoom back and it's very possible three moves to go if you have all those cubes set up. So I, I enjoy this. I don't know how long the replayability is going to be because it's kind of the same thing over and over and over again but the pieces are good the theme works and makes sense you there's a little bit of interaction there can be a whole lot more if you want to play with some of the variants which i don't recommend i think the game's the right length and it's just about doing the right things and of course you get to make poop jokes i guess the whole time but yeah i guess that's a benefit but again it's about how did i manipulate my way to the end before other players and i find that very fascinating and interesting that is wombat rescue Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.